Hi, everyone, and we welcome you to our Sunday morning roundtable discussion on Sunday, September 20th, 2020. Our subject is Matter This Week, and we are recording from the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent, Plainfield, New Jersey, the United States of America, and we welcome you all. And we'll start this morning with our morning prayer. Good morning. Today I'm reading from page 220 of uh, Miscellany, a full statement by Mr. Seddy. I believe in obeying the laws of the land. I practice and teach disobedience since justice is the moral signification of law. Injustice denotes the absence of law. Each day I pray for the pacification of all national difficulties, for the brotherhood of man, for the end of idolatry and infidelity, and for the growth and establishment of Christian religion, Christ's Christianity. I also have faith that my prayer availeth, and that he who is overturning will overturn until he whose right it is shall reign. Each day I pray, God, bless my enemies, make them thy friends, give them to know the joy and the peace of love. Mary Baker Eddy. Thank you. Beautiful prayer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, keep, have that posted on my desk. Very important. All right, Linda. Watch number 32. Watch lest in your denial of the existence of matter, you accept the impression that you are denying something that exists externally to you. The term matter covers not what you see, but the way you see it. In denying matter, you are really denying the way mortal mind sees the true heaven and earth that already exist here and now in all their perfection. You will surely see this perfection the moment your dull eyes are opened, the moment you rise out of the mesmerism of mortal belief. A picture of great beauty may appear a daub to an unenlightened novice. Once the veil of ignorance is lifted, however, by study and practice, the beauty of the picture is appreciated. God, as the great master painter, created the universe in all its perfection. Mortals fail to see it only because of their standpoint of ignorance and materiality. All things appear to be blue to the one wearing blue glasses. End quote. Thank you. Thank you. Very important point. A lot of Christian scientists don't understand this. Comments on this? That's why oh, we, we need the right glasses, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking about this a lot this week. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I was thinking about this a lot this week. And um, I was just reading something, actually, just before um, a few minutes ago. But it's the only concept we can have of anything that appears in front of us is God's concept of it. Um, if we wake up every morning acknowledging that our mind is the mind of God, then the only concept in front of us has got to be God's concept, mind's concept of it. And um, that's all there's that's all there is to anything that appears in front of us. Oh, I've been knowing that all week. <laughs> Thank you. This is how Jesus healed the sick, isn't it? He he held the perfect man where sinning mortals saw a mortal, as Mrs. Eddy says in Science and Health. It's a it's a tremendous healing power when you look out as God would see. That's why that's why it's so much in in um the Bible, science and health, everywhere. It's all it's very often about eyes, beholding, seeing. And why it's so important we see correctly. It helps your own vision, as that beautiful hymn Lawrence quoted, <clears throat> Be thou my vision, O Lord of my life. 
right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, and there, there's nothing. This is the scientific statement of being was in the lesson this week, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All, yeah. All, all is infinite mind and it's infinite manifestation for God is all in all. There is nothing but him. And when something is distorted, that's exactly right. It's distorted. You've got on the wrong glasses. (laughs) But that's all it is, is distorted. And you can get it into focus and prove it in your own experience. And that certainly you start with yourself and then you work out words. And this, I mean, this is a radical concept. I, I can't think of any other religious organization that promotes this concept or that begins to understand it. Because, you know, and, and the medical profession, of course, it, it is all based on matter being the source and the remedy. So... So it's not the kind of thing that you can go around preaching to people, but it is. The, but it is, and it's not the kind of thing that can be readily, easily explained in the English language. I remember many years ago, Mr. Evans, who was a fine practitioner in his own right and also taught some classes. Um, gave some of us an assignment to go through the textbook and make a note of every reference to materialism and then come back to him with an explanation of what materialism is. So we, I remember doing that. I mean, it was a wonderful exercise because you had to think about what really is materialism. And we all came back with, you know, various concepts of what we thought materialism was. And very few of them were the, were correct. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and he, he said, it's very simple. He said, materialism is merely the wrong way of looking at God, what God created. And I'll never forget that. It's not like matter is some big bugaboo or something real outside of God's creation or something that God created, you know, spirit creating matter. It is the wrong way to look at God's spiritual creation. Thank Martha you. Wilcox helps with that, with translation. I think she she really got it, and it takes us away to translate what we think we're seeing into the reality. Yeah, because you know, there's not there's not two realities, yeah. a spiritual and, and a material. There's not two realms, you know, a spiritual and a material. There's not two of anything. Well, I think the thing that helped helped me with this is just the fact that by being here and and learning Christian science here, along the way, things have gone from what I saw before, which was just a really dark, kind of scary world, and now everything is so beautiful and. I don't know, even like yesterday on the way home, I saw a fox run across the road. And, <laughs> and I just think, how did I miss all this? You know, right. but it's because I was looking the wrong way. So that makes complete sense <laughs> when I look at it that way. So this is something that we, we, we can prove to ourselves moment by moment, bit by bit. And and it's not like if you throw out everything that you thought you believed or you know and mrs eddie uh, mrs eddie understood that this was a radical concept and that this it takes time for people to actually 
grasp it and then live it. As she tells us to emerge gently from matter to spirit. For that reason. Lawrence, did you want to say something? Yeah, I think what helped me after how many years was the concept of reflection and where um, an image reflection cannot be so contrary to what the image is. So if God has created us in his image and likeness and we are his reflection, that brought to thought that, okay, so this concept of us being our true self would be in spiritual I must accept because it is impossible for spirit God to have a reflection that is so contrary to what he is. Thank you. I know Jim likes to quote to me, matter doesn't matter. <laughs> so, so anyway, and, and this, this beautiful lesson was written by Fairley and it brings out, it's very fresh. It's very different. Um, Joanne, wrote in her forum comment about the watching point after st quoting part of the watching point it is god that opens my eyes to the remembrance of his holiness therefore i give thanks to god henry grove an Eng english minister 1683 to 1738 wrote about this verse god feeds our heart with a thousand little rivulets of joy and satisfaction from created objects what an abundance of good to be thankful for and to know that it comes from God and is not in matter. And Andreas Musculus, 1514 to 1581, a German Lutheran theologian, writes about the same verse, two things are to be observed. One, that the psalmist unites joy in the Lord and praise of God. Another, that he connects the praise of God with the remembrance of his holiness. Thus, this verse contains the root and fruit of divine praise. The root is joy in God. The fruit is the remembrance of God and his goodness. <laughs> now, it's amazing to me this lesson brought out what we say often that Mrs. Evans had taught us, that joy and gratitude are two essential ingredients to any healing. And you try this, and if you think you've tried it and it's not working, then you're not doing it. I used to think I was joyful and grateful, but I was not. It was terribly superficial. This is really deep. Uh, it, it is because you are a reflection of God. You are acknowledging your oneness with God. You can't help but be joyful and grateful. It's just what you are. But if, if you don't feel that yet, you keep working on it. And that's why... The importance of Florence's testimony on Wednesday night. Florence, which was about praising God. I mean, I, I never, I never really took time to do that. Looking back, I'm like all the time, oh, this is wrong. You know, help me with this, help me with that. But to take time, how was I really appreciating the omnipotence, the this wonderful goodness, mercy? All that there is for us. How was I, you know, even acknowledging and then appreciating with all my heart? I wasn't. All I cared about was just getting rid of the fully fear. But um, I think it's 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 very important. And I think Linda also writes something about being silent. That that time with God, we must often take time to be with him, just thank him, thank him, thank him. I, I just, it makes a, such a big difference. That's a, that's a fact. It is, it is hugely important. That hymn that I love, I think maybe we sang it Wednesday, praise him, praise him, praise the everlasting king. This is why we have a Thanksgiving service. Now, there's a very important article. It's on our website. We usually, sometimes we have it in the November issue of The Liberator. It's called Gratitude by Herbert Eustace. And then he says, when on vacation one Sunday evening, it was my privilege to hear a learned bishop of the Episcopal Church deliver a sermon. In his address, he stated that in his old parish, in one of the large eastern cities, a parish that contained some of the best Christian workers he had ever known, on the reading desks in the church, were the old prayer books that had been there for over a century. They were not then being used, more modern ones having been replaced them. 
One day the thought came to me to look over these old books to see what prayers to God had been most frequently used. First, he turned to the prayers for help for the sick, for the safety of those at sea, for the many other blessing mortals so urgently desired. All these prayers were black with finger marks, showing how much they had been used. He then turned to the prayers of thanksgiving to God. And he was amazed to find that these prayers of deep gratitude were as clean as any pages in the book, (laughs) showing how little they had been used. There was every evidence to show how constantly they had prayed to God for what they desired, but there was no evidence to show that they expressed any gratitude for the blessings received. And then, are we truly grateful for all the blessings that infinite love is showering on us? Are we not too often like the 10 lepers whom Jesus healed, only one of whom came back to render thanks? Out of 10 blessings, do we render thanks for even one? How many times do we allow error to whisper to us when some prayer is is answered that it just happened that way or that we should have gotten well anyway? We are content that we have what we wanted or that we are well. Our prayer of thanksgiving is not made. And we have robbed God of what rightfully belongs to him, a grateful heart. And we have furthermore denied the Bible, for it tells us that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. Dear friends, let us always be ready to acknowledge our Heavenly Father's love and care Not in one way only, but in every way. Let us turn to him alone with our psalm of thanksgiving for everything that comes into our lives. With St. Paul, let us rejoice at affirmities, reproaches, necessities, persecutions, and distresses for Christ's sake. Remember, this self-same God is our helper. He has mercy upon us and guides our every, every event of our careers of our careers that's from unity of good if we do this we will learn that the seeming distresses are angels entertained unawares and that love has been with us all the time what a glorious thought is this that we live in love could we possibly ask for more can we express gratitude in anything less than earnest consecrated lives consecrated to god Striving to have the same mind in us that was also in Christ Jesus. Consecrated to the steadfast purpose of proving that God's kingdom has indeed come on earth as in heaven. That's this lesson, frankly, (laughs) on matter of all things. (laughs) So think of those points in that. We've robbed God of a grateful heart. And and Florence and I can tell people who are really grateful, those who really want to do this work and, and become consecrated, do. And those that really aren't grateful, don't. It's yeah. a test of the gratitude. And you can't, you can't fake this. Florence? No, I mean, that's why she, Mrs. Eddie keeps telling us, you know, even if whatever you think you want to, you want healed, it's not showing any difference. You keep on keeping on. It's in the blue book. It's everywhere. I mean, that's, you know, it means that I thank you anyway. I know what who you are. I mean, I praise you. As, and it's amazing how much we forget. We've said this many times, but it's amazing how much we forget the good that has come in our lives. I asked somebody this week, <laughs> And, you know, he's thinking about it now. All the good that has come, did he ever think it was from God? Yes. Thank you. And that's why Jesus told his disciples, this is life eternal, to know thee, the only true God. Period. Right? Yeah. You can't know God without being absolutely incredibly grateful for him <laughs> if you're not grateful for him it shows you don't know who he is yeah, you don't know who he is and, and, and what a shame because if you don't know who god is you can't know who you are and mrs eddie has said that this knowing this that all good coming from god and this is a paraphrase but moment by moment 
This will do more for you than anything else can. And we can tell just by the expressions on people's faces if they're doing this or not. <laughs> and for the most part, you know, it is said that the people of God have joyous, happy, grateful faces. And what a wonderful thing to teach our children. It's the most important thing you can teach your children. So I'm, I'm skipping around today because we'll come back to the responsive reading again. But I think I'll go now to um, Susan. And Susan, <laughs> because hers was definitely on gratitude, her forum comments. I think she's here. Susan, you want to speak to this? Hi, yes. Um, so mostly all that you were just talking about was the opposite of what I was doing until I found Plainfield. And um, I always prayed to God for help that I needed things from him. And my prayer was mostly, uh, please help me. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, I've learned so much just from coming here and um, just about being grateful to God and not coming to him with all my needs because he actually already has made me complete. And um, so that's kind of what I was writing about. Um, the lesson this week was great because I had actually never read the story of Jezebel. And um, I've heard songs written about Jezebel and that she was an evil woman, but I didn't really know the story. Um, and when I read it, not only did I realize Jezebel was evil, but um, her husband Ahab had actually started the whole bull rolling because he was very ungrateful. And um, his ingratitude triggered Jezebel to do some evil works. Thank you. Thank you. Before we go on with that story, I just wanted to mention, too, because it made me smile where you said, you know, you didn't give a testimony this week and you felt <laughs> that you felt badly about that. <laughs> now, that is what we've all come to in this church. Um, now, we get so many. Thank God we have so many testimonies that all of you don't have to necessarily give a testimony every week. But you always should be prepared with your heart overflowing with gratitude for what God has done. Be prepared to give so we have no long silences. And as Mrs. Evans would tell us, if, if you don't have one thing to be grateful for in a whole week, well, what's the matter with you? <laughs> you better you better get your gratitude level going. And so, Jeremy, what did you say? Oh, yeah. Back in, I think it was October 2013, I showed up one Wednesday without a testimony. And I felt awful that whole whole week. <laughs> <laughs> so I showed up with one the next week and I gave a testimony and as soon as I gave it I felt better so I've never shown up without one sense <laughs> thank you very much and he gives such beautiful ones and you, you shouldn't stress and strain and just feel like you've got to give a testimony no that's the wrong motive it should just be overwhelming gratitude in your heart um, and that's the right motive gratitude to God and I, I remember the same experience. I didn't give a testimony, and I was just kicking myself all week. And that shows growth because I felt worse not giving a testimony than because at that time, before giving a testimony, I thought I was going to pass out. My heart was pounding. My <laughs> knees were shaking. I thought I was going to do oh. <laughs> It was so hard to get up in front of everybody and say something. So Yeah, that, that's, actually, yeah that's actually the reason why I didn't. <laughs> Oh, well, and that's that. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's common for a lot of people. You know, it can be a, a frightening experience to actually speak in front of people, even if you can't see them, knowing that they're on the other end of the phone. But Mrs. and and Mrs. Evans used to say, "But if your heart is full of gratitude, if you love everybody who's listening, that love will get you up on your feet." And you won't have anything to feel self-conscious about. 
And every demonstration has some resistance against it, so that's a that's kind of an easy one to get through. Yes. And and this is why we've talked about too resistance on a Wednesday. All these things come up. Everything happens to make you feel ungrateful, or maybe it wasn't a complete healing, or you're not going to make it to church, or you know your your voice is all foggy and you can't talk. I mean, there's all these things. We we laugh at them now, and I hope you all are learning to laugh at them as well when they come up on a Wednesday. Sometimes on the weekend too. Certainly those that those that you that read have to do this all the time. I mean, <laughs> constant uh, interference or something not. But you learn to be wise and you learn to handle it. And and pretty soon when it knows you're determined and nothing's going to stop you, it backs off and it, it leaves you alone. So, and that's tremendous growth. And this, my friends, is what it means to handle animal magnetism. That's what it means. A power apart from God that would stop you or for, Make you forget or neglect your duty to God, to your leader, and to mankind. Now back to oh, sorry. Sorry. No, I also feel that uh, obviously all of us can give a testimony on a particular Wednesday, but I feel that if one there's one you were to give and you didn't give, it makes you just feel so bad. But if you come at least with your heart, with gratitude, as you said and just support the service even, you know, just being thankful in your own thought and blessing mankind or blessing the service and everything. I think that leaves you, I don't, I don't think you leave feeling so bad if you didn't give a testimony. Yeah. Yes. It once was, if you didn't give a testimony, there would have been a long silence and, and all of that, and that made you feel really bad. Now that's not necessarily true. Because we thank God so many of you are giving testimonies or writing testimonies to be read. Um, it should be an abundance of, of God's glory every Wednesday. But it, it is also why we watch and pray Tuesday nights, why we're watching and praying on Wednesdays, because Era would like to say, no, I'm going to shut your mouth. You have nothing to be grateful for. Well, when that comes, you know who's that's yeah. what's that about boy oh boy now this charming story of Ahab and Jezebel <laughs> yeah now this now you see this is an example of materialism boy were they ever materialists <laughs> we have Ahab who is a very weak man and a whining man right I mean Susan brings out in her forum here he's wealthy and he wants what his neighbor has that's, that's ugly materialism. That's disobeying of the commandments. This is why the commandments are commands and not suggestions. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not covet. It's a big one. Yes, it is. So he's whining and complaining and coveting. And so Jezebel, who, yes, was very wicked in belief, <laughs> because ultimately <laughs> we're all children of God, but this is a caricature of what not to do. So she gets she gets people to speak out against Naboth. And Naboth is just saying, hey, I'm not going to give up my land. This is my father's land. He had every right to say that. So what a wicked thing. So you can't get what you want. So you disobey what commandment? Thou shalt not kill. Well, and before that yeah, one. Before that, okay. Covet. Steals. Before that, oh. we're coveting. But what's the next one? Thou shalt not bear false witness Witness against thy neighbor. <laughs> you see, and this is, you see it going on today. Many instances. Maybe we don't always know who's who, unless our spiritual sense is telling us. They will spread lies about people, ruin people's lives, careers. Bearing false witness. No, 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 no. If you do that, and that's why I said in my testimony a few weeks ago, God's law of divine justice is in full and complete operation. The wicked shall not go unpunished. They shouldn't. They shouldn't, and they won't. And they might seem to for a while. And you see another point in this lesson. Okay, you can say, oh, well, what's his name? Ahab? Repented and got off the hook. But then who suffered? His children. His children. 
And honestly, if you've got any heart at all, that is worse, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He didn't get away with a thing. And if he taught his children to be wicked, he didn't get away with a thing. And it came down on their heads. He did not get off the hook. He might have, for a little bit, maybe he thought so in his selfish mind. This is a story of materialism. And it's many lessons to be taught. And certainly the three commandments broken. Coveting, bearing false witness, and then, yes, killing. I think uh, both Ahab and Jezebel um, uh, eventually had um, um, violent ends. They certainly did. Thank you, Barbara. Yes, they did. And evil always destroys itself. You can count on it. And it sounds like, you know, what happened really is contrary to, you know, the the father's sins will not be visited on their children. But I think the children were also indulging in the same sins. So the verse 29, when it says that the, the sins were visited on his children, it sounds as if it's contrary to God's mercy. It doesn't, you know, the father's sins are not, uh, the children are not punished for the father's sins. But in this case, it, it seems like the children carried on the same things he was doing. And that's why they also suffered. That's right. Exactly. That's true. Otherwise, it's, it's as if, well, I thought, I thought it says that God, for you know, he, the children are not to suffer because of uh, uh, father's sins. Well, and that is something we can know when we see things like this happening. We can know that's true. We can protect the innocent. But many times, if God can get, cannot, well, and it's not God, but if, if, if someone is just blindly disobedient, disobedient, not listening, not listening, mm-hmm. and they seem to be getting away, it will hit something. Mrs. Evans used to teach us this. And I know in my own experience, you don't want it coming down on somebody you love. Uh, and what does she say? That a spiritually minded um, baby or child put into the hands of gross parents oh yeah they early wilt and die droop droop i think is the word yeah that's not that's not you know we don't want that and and what happened to to pharaoh when he wouldn't listen plague after plague after plague after plague then finally what his son died too yes and then all of a sudden, he, they, yeah, I think I better change. Don't ever let it go to that. This is extreme, okay? This is extreme, but don't do this. Don't be so willful and, and wicked. No. Sometimes you can't be all nice and, and, you know, sometimes you've got to realize. And then, then that, what is it, infidelity, where you have to retrace your steps in tears. Okay, Florence. You know, it's something uh, Charles Spurgeon wrote. Uh, it says, a discontented man dooms himself to the direst form of poverty. Yea, he makes himself so great a pauper that the revenues of empires could not enrich him. Are you impatient in your present position? Believe me that, as George Herbert said of revenues in times gone by, quote, he that cannot live on 20 pounds a year cannot live on 40. So may I say, he who is not contented in his present position will not be contented in another, though it bring him double possessions. So is that content? Wow. Yeah, this content. That is right. It's a state of mind. Hmm? And that is so true. And look, this Ahab was an example of it, a rich man with everything, but he wanted more. It's a state of mind, and you can be content and happy with little. You can be content and happy with a lot, but you can also be miserable with a lot and miserable with a little. It's a state, it's a state of consciousness, and how to heal it in you is praise God and be grateful for what you do have. If it's the one talent, this is something I found on I, it helped me so much years ago, and I had trouble finding it again. I was so happy I found it. It's on page 195 of Miscellany. 
I don't think I gave this in, at the round table. I think I've given it. Okay. We must resign with good grace what we are denied and press on with what we are. For we cannot do more than we are, nor understand what is not ripening in us. To do good to all because we love all and to use in God's service the one talent that we all have is our only means of adding to that talent and the best way to silence a deep discontent with our shortcomings. Now, we all have at least one talent, <laughs> okay? And that one is what? Love, gratitude, yes. Take it, use it, and grow on that. Don't just sit and grumble and grumble and grumble because you, you didn't get what everybody else, what you perceive everyone else has. This is the story, the parable of the talents, right? The, the one, the person that hid the talent ended up getting nothing, only had one. Take whatever it is you have and build on it. For God's sakes, do that. And you will build on it. And I'm telling you, gratitude is a huge one. Because, again, you cannot be grateful and depressed at the same time. And also, you will shine. People will notice you. People will start wanting to be with you. People will start wanting you to do things. It, it just, it'll grow your talent. But if you sit like a little miserly old, <laughs> you're just going to go down. And, and, frankly, you'll deserve to till you wake up. People don't usually realize how much quote talented people work you know <laughs> it's not just sitting there well that's and, right you know because i've had people say that to me you know, like the technology comes easy to me <laughs> you know i've read like millions of pages and <laughs> devoted 25 years to this so i don't <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. work at it and and a lot of that that talk that coveting talk is just plain lazy they don't want to work they want, they want the results, but they don't want the, the discipline and the labor that it took to get there. And that's, that's it. That's it. You, and you can't get around that. And you might be able to fool some people, but you won't fool everybody. You, what you, you get what you earn. And the, uh, see, the basis throughout my life is the getting to God uh, opens the door for those talents. Uh, I remember Lincoln said, if the first time you don't succeed, try, try again. It's so simple. But once you open the door to God, then everything starts to flow. And you can really bless the way you're supposed to. Yeah. So it's just an error that's blocking the flow of good. That's all. That's it. That's so Thank true. You. Just error blocking the flow of good. And Craig's a wonderful example of that. So many. <laughs> you got to take that first step. And keep going. <laughs> you do. And never forget. Never stop being grateful. Take your one talent and build on that. And that is what true business is. Mm -hmm. That is the essence of true business. We all have talents. We help one another. And by the way, we get compensated for it one way or another. And there's, more, there's an infinite amount of good to go around. So it's not hard to be to, to be blessed for what you do it's not why you do it necessarily well you do it to meet the needs and there's an infinite amount of needs that need to be met so you meet needs and and yeah blessed and it, is he who sees his brother's need and supplies it yes seeking it you know in, a, in another good thank you, you know. <laughs> but it but it starts out by blessed is that person that person is blessed for doing it. Yeah, something else on, on this is that you need to take care of what you have and yeah. not treat it like it's nothing. Yes. Don't so bury Thank your you. talent. <laughs> Thank you. And take care of the little God has given you. If you're living in a hovel, well, you can keep it clean and neat and orderly and take care of it. Take care of your car. It's 15 years old will keep it neat and orderly and take care of it. Whatever you have. If you don't, you're not grateful. But what God has given you 
can last forever if you're grateful for it. It will. It, it, it's what is that in the Bible? And the shoe's not waxing and, old. And the shoe's not waxing old. Yes, it'll last you forever. Lillian proved that with the car she loved. It lasted for I don't know how long. <laughs> Many of you have when you've loved something. It lasts a long, long time. You lose what you're not grateful for. And then that's when the tears start to flow. And then you realize, oh, yes, what I once had. Don't let it come to that. Don't let it come to that. It can be recovered as you change, you know, God's law of recovery. But why go through all that when we know better? Now, I'll just briefly, Parthen's beautiful forum about that teacher who seems to math teacher so rough and gruff. And then we find out in the hospital, he goes in and he's taking care of the little babies and <laughs> he has no family or children of his own, but he loves and he loves the little babies. He goes in the hospital, the, the babies who, who need extra attention and their parents can't be there all the time. And he says, if I don't do it, who will? And the nurses say the babies can be crying and carrying on. But when that man comes in and, and cares for them, um, they quiet down because they feel his love. Don't tell me you don't have anything to do or any way to bless. Don't don't say that to me because I know that's a damn lie and it is a damn lie. It's damned by God because it's damnable. It's not of God. So there's always a way you can bless and you can give. Just keep your eyes and ears open and love and you'll find it. God will lead you to it. As Craig said, it's only error that blocks your way. I just, I'd like to say one other thing about Jezebel. It just came to me this morning while going over the lesson that she's like the worst case of an enabler. But yeah, that was <laughs> totally what enabling is, is, is that kind of thing. Very much so. She's also a manipulator. Well, that's it. She manipulated her way into getting married to the guy. And she, she, saw, her, she saw herself as a political manipulator to preserve the kingdom, to preserve her husband's, you know, being the king. That was her, that was her concept of security. It was totally material, totally personal, and totally wrong. She allowed... Go ahead. And, and, hey, and they have allowed her to kind of rule them, apparently. Sure. He was a weak man. Yeah. The pot always has its cover, as they say. Um, and it's interesting how this lesson sort of built on last week's, on substance, because there's a lot about being a cheerful giver. And this meant a lot to me, too, in science and health. It is easier to desire truth and rich one, oneself of error. Mortals might seek the understanding of Christian science, but they will not be able to glean from Christian science the facts of being without striving for them. This strife continues, consists in the endeavor to forsake error of every kind and to possess no other consciousness but good. Now, I remember this. I remember because years ago in one of Mrs. Evans' class, I had to answer this, and I answered it wrong. I don't remember what I said, but I know it wasn't the right answer. Anyway, I think I thought things were a little too easy. I skipped over the striving part. Strive. Definition. Very interesting. Okay, to labor hard. Not easy. To endeavor with earnest. And then to oppose by contrary qualities. So here we go. You're ungrateful. What do you do? What's the contrary quality? Grateful. Be grateful. <laughs> oppose that ingratitude. Yes, oppose. Oppose with it. If you're feeling depressed. Oppose, oppose that depressing suggestion. Think a song. Yes, <laughs> sing something happy. Yeah. Praise God. Get to your hymnal. Express joy. Oppose. That's the striving. And it, it when you're down flat on your back and feeling miserable and can't raise your hand and you're in terrible pain, that's hard to do. But you've got to strive earnest, earnestly, laboriously. Counteract those feelings. Oppose with contrary qualities. It feels, what does Mrs. Eddy say? If you can't raise your hand, raise it. And now you can 
and on an audio anyway, right? Lots of audios on the blue, I mean, YouTube. Yes. yes. And also, thank you, Florence, that word glean, I wasn't sure what that meant. And, you know, in, in the farming, after they've worked the farm, they go back and, and get all the pieces that are left. It says to collect things that are scattered, get scattered, to gather slowly and laboriously, bit by bit, discover or to find out bit by bit. Now, this is what you all are doing, and we all are doing. We're gleaning from these these Bible studies or, you know, whatever um, stories versus Mrs. Eddy, statements by Mrs. Eddy. We're going over them, looking up definitions, gleaning everything we can get from them, squeezing that lemon, getting it all. Don't let it go to waste. Gather it up. So, and in doing this, we are so blessed. Now, we have more hours more to talk about, but both Linda and Karen wrote wonderful watches. Um, let's see. Well, briefly, Linda, if you if you didn't see Linda's about the importance of what? Linda. The Sabbath. Yes. And, and seen as the gift of being grateful for it. Yes, and it's beautiful. Um, when we see it as a gift, we will rejoice in its bountiful blessings. God's grace and generosity infuses the Sabbath with hope, and Sabbath rest brings heavenly, heavenly directions into our earthly duties. This is not burdensome, but, but a path to freedom. All these beautiful things about the Sabbath, and this is why we love it, and this is why we gather together on the Sabbath and keep it every day, not just Sundays. So thank you, Linda. And then Karen on the Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. Go ahead, Karen. Okay, I found this in Barnes' um, commentary, and this is what he, this is what it says. The Lord reigneth. This is the general fact to be dealt, dwelt upon. This is the foundation of joy and praise. The universe is not without a sovereign. It is not the abode of anarchy. It is not the production of chance. It is not subject to mere physical laws. It is not under the control of evil. It is under the government of a God, a wise, holy, intelligent, just, benevolent being who rules it well and who presides over all its affairs. If there is anything for which we should rejoice, it is that there is one mind, everlasting and most glorious, who presides over the universe and conducts all things according to his own wise and eternal plan. Let the earth rejoice. The earth itself, all parts of it, all that dwell upon it, as the earth everywhere derives whatever it has of her fertility, beauty, grandeur, or stability from God, as order, beauty, productiveness, are diffused everywhere over it, as it has received so many proofs of the divine beneficence toward it, it has occasion for universal joy. Let the multitude of vials be glad thereof. The eye of the psalmist is evidently on the many islands which are scattered over the sea, not merely the continents, the extended countries where nations dwell, have occasion for joy, but the beautiful islands, the spots of earth, which have risen from the deep and which are covered with fruits and flowers, these too have occasion to rejoice, to rejoice that God has raised them from the waters, that he keeps them from being overflowed or washed away, that he clothes them with beauty, that he makes them the abode of happy life, that he places them in the wastes of the ocean as he does the stars in the wastes of the sky to beautify the universe. The idea in the verse is that all the earth has, see, has cause to rejoice that Yahweh reigns. Beautiful. And that he had the glasses on the right glasses. Not on the right <laughs> glasses. And that will make some good watch messages from yes, there. Thank you. you. Wonderful. Yeah. And this, my friends, keeps us out of the ghastly farce of material existence. 
and you know the other examples in the lesson about all the the Zacchaeus who was rich but he loved his neighbor and did what he should and the widow's might those are the examples of giving and and being grateful and doing what's right by God so thank you all for wonderful contributions every week and now we will with Gary this is the address to the Concord Church February 1899 clouds Parsimonious of rain that swing in the sky with dumb thunderbolts are seen and forgotten in the same hour, while those with a mighty rush, which waken the stagnant waters and solicit every root and every leaf with the treasures of rain, ask no praising. Remember, thou canst be brought into no condition, be it ever so severe, where love has not been before thee and where its tender lesson is not awaiting thee. Therefore, despair not, nor murmur. For that which seeketh to save, to heal, and to deliver will guide thee, if thou seekest this guidance. Pliny gives the following description of the character of true greatness. Quote, Doing what deserves to be written, and writing what deserves to be read, and rendering the world happier and better for having lived in it. End quote. Strive thou for the joy and crown of such a pilgrimage, the service of such a mission. A heart touched and hallowed by one chord of Christian science can accomplish the full scale, but this heart must be honest and in earnest and never weary of struggling to be perfect, to reflect the divine life, truth, and love. Stand by the limpid lake, sleeping amid willowy banks dyed with emerald. See therein the mirrored sky and the moon ablaze with her mild glory. This will stir your heart. Then, in speechless prayer, Ask God to enable you to reflect God, to become his own image and likeness. Even the calm, clear, radiant reflection of Christ's glory, healing the sick, bringing the sinner to repentance, and raising the spiritually dead in trespasses and sins to life in God. Jesus said, quote, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. End quote. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you. 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 Thank you.